Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 here and destroy the ever living band list format amazingness. Boo boo, staying off that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the almost 1500 ladder. Don't worry, I know that this looks daunting with all these here, but we're we're gonna not be talking about every single one of these things. I wanted to find a tier list that I could use to talk about this brand new format. So if you haven't seen my bandless reaction, definitely go see it. We actually caught the ban list live as Konami's Twitter page updated. And of course, like I said in that video, be sure to have your notifications on for the channel. We're gonna be posting a lot of videos today throughout the day and into the rest of, uh, well, next week. Um, but I wanna talk about this new format and where the decks stand. Um, let's go ahead and just dive right into this here. Like I said, I don't know how to make tier lists, so there might be duplicates in here. We're not going to be talking about everything. First up is Snake Eyes. So Snake Eyes got Poplar and Ash to one. They didn't hit Wanted. They didn't hit Black Witch. And I had talked about on the channel how you shouldn't expect the Dia Bellstar cards to get hit, but you should see the Snake Eye cards get hit. Now, they also did ban Fiend Smith Lacrima, and they also put Skill Dream to one. And they also banned Apollosa. So they went for more hitting cards that Snake Eyes can play and hitting their end board. And even with all that, I feel like once people, you know, settle in and start testing this new format, people are going to realize how good Snake Eyes is still even after these hits. Because you got to keep in mind, we still have three Bonfire. It's not semi-limited here like it is in the OCG. So you can still go Bonfire into Snake Eye Ash and just have a good time. The issue is, though, is that with Apollosa Band and Lacrima Band, what board, at least what is your end board going to be now that these cards are gone? And you got to keep in mind, I'm making this video the day the ban list dropped. So, you know, things haven't been solved yet. Like, it just dropped 10 minutes ago. So, I do think that as an engine, it is still Tier 1. And that's what Snake Eyes has been this entire time. It's just been, overall, a good engine with other stuff thrown into it. It's been almost a good, good stuff deck type of deal. So this deck is, I still feel like, going to be Tier 1, but it all depends on what that end board is going to be. And taking away things like Apollosa, you know, if your end board is a Flamberge, Little Knight, and Mascarena, like, what are you doing? You have to play more engine cards. Like, what do you do, max out on Oak? That doesn't feel good. So my early thoughts are that this is still going to be a Tier 1 engine slash deck, maybe. Um, and, of course, I haven't discussed this yet because my mind is just all over the place. we got the Tier 1, Tier 2 row category, and, of course, our patented booty booty butt cheek category if you're playing these decks uh good luck you should maybe be playing master duel aka master shits next up is Ubel. so i was really worried about what was going to happen in this deck i was really afraid they were going to hit nightmare throne to one and they didn't do that they all they did was hit opening of the spirit gates to one which is fantastic all you do is max out on three copies of Dark Beckoning Beast, one Chaos Summoning Beast with the one copy of Spirit Gates, and you're still playing a good deck. This deck lost nothing else. The, the consistency hit with Spirit Gates is not a big deal. The reason why people maxed out on Spirit Gates was because if you went Beckoning Beast into a monster and the opponent drolled you, the droll really hurt. So I feel like that this deck can still, potentially with how much um, gas it opens, it can still potentially lose to an Ash plus Imperm, ideally, um, but it just depends on how they open, right? So do keep that in mind. Um, I think that this deck is just going to be absolutely phenomenal. Having access to Aerial Eater, even with fucking Beatrice banned, you still have an in-archetype, or a, rather an in-house uh, Beatrice. Like, it's it's not a big deal. Um, we're not even going to talk about the Cyber Dragon trash and stuff here. Uh, Fiendsmith, I feel, is still a Tier 1 engine, not necessarily a Tier 1 deck. I think that goes without saying. Even with losing Lacrima, like, okay, you don't have to worry about the burn damage in time. Not every deck has access to that now, but you can still make a Ptolemy M7 to pick up a monster from your grave. You can still make a Wave High King Caesar by summon number 5 in order to uh, solidify you from, or to insulate you from Nibiru, right? So, um, you gotta be playing Fiendsmith cards if your deck's able to, and if you can afford the space in your deck. Metal Foes had no hits at all. I'm gonna say this is a Tier 1 deck. Ostinato is an insane card. It's not once per turn, um, so still having three copies of that is absolutely insane. And the boards that it can end on, especially if you learn the deck inside and out, are very, very good. So I, I think that Melodious is also another great pick going into this new format. Voiceless Voice. So I'm going to say the deck is tier two. Uh, Eve is at one, but it does what it does very consistently, very well. You know, getting out the two continuous spells, the continuous trap, along with the Voiceless Voice Skull Guardian with like 4,100 attack. Still a very solid deck. It just... I don't know if it's going to be able to keep up with the other big boys and girls in the room, but Voiceless Voice is still a fantastic pick. 
Um, Chimera, I'm going to say, is Tier 2. Losing Lacrima is really not that big of a deal, and they can play the Fiendsmith cards, and it's no hindrance to them at all. Um, let's go ahead and jump around here a little bit. Uh, Flunder is... Honestly, Flunder's booty booty butt cheek now. Prosperity's at one, and the deck already bricked on itself as enough as it is. Like, Flunder's just garbage. We still have Shifter at three, unfortunately. I'm starting to think it's our equivalent of Max C at this point. But, like, if you don't see Shifter against these big, badass decks, like, you're just losing. Brandon. So, I'm going to put Brandon here in tier two. Branded Fusion is finally at one. If you get your one of Branded Fusion ashed, and you don't have a way to pick it back up from your grave in that same turn... You're crapping all over the floor, pimp. You can gimmick puppet lock me, but that's only going to be because I don't open up Ash. Like, the branded fusion, or the, the branded deck in general, is um, is very high risk, high reward, in my opinion. Um, let's see here. Let's jump around a little bit. Uh, Goaty is booty booty butt cheeks. Um, this is Cash Tira mixed with something. Who cares? Um, no one's playing Fire King Tri Brigade anymore. That, you can tell this tier list is kind of old because there's some really old decks in here. Um, let's see here. So Sprite in general, I think is rogue. You can still play Sprite Runic. Uh, in fact, I'm even going to put Runic here in the rogue category. Skill Drain went to one, but like you could just play Tyrant's Tirade. Like it, it's not that big of a deal. Or you just play like Dimensional Fissure or something. Like it's, it's really not that big of an issue. Sprite goes hand in hand with it because it's an engine that it can play. Sprite is still consistently seen to be good. Actually in the, what I can now say is the previous format, thank God. Um, there was a 59 card pile playing three droplets and like some other stuff and like three mulch army that ended up I think like winning a regional and I think it was the same guy who piloted it to two different regionals and like got top eight at one and won the other or like won both or something like that like it 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 was weird it was weird but it, it was a 59 card pile and it was freaking hilarious um next up is infernoid so that grass looks greener aka that ass looks thicker is now at one so back in the day when it was at one, Infernoid decks were playing 60 card piles with three left arm offerings, and then you also played that Grass Looks Greener to try and see it as often as you could. Now we have things like Triple Tactic Thrust. So now you can just pick up the left arm or pick up the, the that Grass Looks Greener and just proceed to play the game. It's going to be really interesting to see how people deck build now into this new format because back then a lot of people played 60 card piles just to stop that Grass Looks Greener from being a good card and it just became a dead draw. So I'm, I'm willing to put this in the row category to see what it can do. I'm, I'm really interested to see how that goes. I never thought it would come back. I figured Konami thought it, games would take too long to resolve it. But now we're going to probably see 60 card tier element grass looks greener decks like we did in the OCG. So prepare your anuses for that. Um, Exodia is rogue. It's it's a local buster. It's kind of whatever. Mimigul in tier two. Um, obviously, we don't have Rage of the Abyss yet. We don't know what the support's going to be in that. But Mimigul just seems like a really solid deck. There's several different ways that you could play it, you know, with or without Fiendsmith cards with a Kashtira engine. I have high hopes for Mimigul, especially once we get whatever their new support is out of Rage of the Abyss. Um, Centurion, I'm putting in Rogue. I think it's getting more support. Let me know in the comments. I could be wrong about that. But, like, King Calamity's banned. So, like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing if you can't King Calamity lock the opponent? Um, Orcus is booty booty butt cheeks. I don't care that Thunder Dragon Colossus and Ib and Armageddon Knight are all back. It, it just doesn't matter. Um, Dark Dark World, I'm going to put in Rogue. You lose to Droll and Shifter. Like, I don't really know what else to say. Rescue Ace, I feel like you just have better options. Like, even though they can play Snake Eye cards and Fiendsmith cards, whatever, I feel like that your tier one choices are just better than Rescue Ace. Like, it's kind of like if you can afford Rescue Ace and Snake Eye cards and Fiendsmith cards, why not just play one of the tier one decks instead? Because. It's it's just hard to make a good argument for Rescue Ace. Not that it's a bad deck, but just it's it's getting worse as time goes by, unfortunately. Um, let's see here. Labyrinth. So Labyrinth I'm putting in the rogue category. Um, I've seen some builds where they play Fiendsmith cards. I've seen even 60-card builds I've talked about on the channel that were playing fucking magical hats. And if you can wrap your brain around how to resolve that linear equation canon thing, if you've got a big enough brain for it, then it can definitely win you some games. Um I think it's still good going into this new format. Losing double skill drain, losing two prosperity if you played it. Yeah, it sucks, but like not every build played prosperity, not every build played skill drain. Um, I, I think you're fine without those cards. Um, I don't really feel like you've got hit that hard on the balance. Uh, Pure Fire King is garbage. You've got better ways to play it. Um, I don't know why this is listed twice. I don't know why this is listed. Uh, Exo Sisters, booty booty butt cheeks. Um, rest in peace, Exo Sister. Uh, stun is in the row category for a reason because it's it's stun. Uh, if you were playing Skill Drain, uh, rest in peace. Vanquish Souls, booty booty butt cheeks. Um, I'm still after this balance going to say that white 
Forest is tier two. We really need that Azamina support out of Rage of the Abyss for this to really become a tier one contender. But I think moving into this new format, even losing two copies of Skill Drain, some builds only played one to be able to pick up with the Diabelle um, Synchro, where you could pick up the Skill Drain from the Graveyard. Um, so that's that's something to keep in mind. Um, Gimmick Puppet is garbage now. The FTK is dead, so I don't really know what you're doing. Um, Tempai, I'm still going to say, is uh, in the Tier 2 category. You lost 2 Prosperity, 2 Sangin Summoning. I guess you could play where there's a will, there's a way out. I don't really see that big of a deal in it. Uh, Dragon Link is Rogue. Same with Sky Striker. Tier Element, I'm actually going to put in Tier 2 because now you have that grass looks greener. And it's going to be really interesting to see if Tier is going to be able to do anything. We don't have the Millers. We still have the Shufflers. But I'm willing to put this in the Tier 2 category, especially for like that honeymoon phase. The first couple weeks into a new format, you know people are going to be testing Tier Element like crazy with that ass looks thicker. Um, Virtual World is Booty Booty Butt Cheeks. Your Yujo Friendship the Dex. Shining Sarcophagus is Booty Booty Butt Cheeks. Um, there's a lot of liquid ass decks in here. Uh, Sword Soul, no. Dinos, no. Unchained, you're better off playing it as an engine in Ubel, so no. Raid Raptor is trash. Uh, I think this is Blackwing. That's garbage. Um, I don't know why these are listed. They're garbage. Um, Synchron anything, no. Uh, I'd rather go touch grass. Dinomorphia, no. Uh, Pendulums, uh, plush fire. So plush fire is a hard once per turn, but I don't feel like that helps it enough to move it past like the booty booty butt cheek category. Heroes, no. Stop. Like end of main nib response. Thunder dragon, no. Um, Cash Tira, no. Trap tricks, no. Like pretty much all of these here are just booty booty butt cheeks. Medulce are still terrible. Uh, Resonator, no. Uh, let me see, Drytron, you might as well play Voiceless. Salad, uh, I'll put in the row category. Salad is that deck, like I say in every tier list, it's that deck that one dude in a 400-man regional could be playing. I'll play him and I'll fucking lose. But then he'll lose to everybody else. I always lose to Salad and I just don't know why. Uh, Goblin Bikers are booty booty butt cheeks with a side of dog water. Um, I think that's really everything here. I'm trying to quickly go through to see if there's anything here. Uh, purely, it just can't keep up with the current meta. I think you need Delicious Memory at 3 and Sleepy at 3 to really have it be any sort of successful. The Shark stuff is garbage until Rage of the Abyss. Um, Mana Diem, you don't have King Calamity. I, I don't know why you'd be playing this deck. Um, Horus Anything is Booty Booty Ass Cheeks. Like, it's it's so trash. And Marincess, no. Uh, Marincess uh, died a long time ago. Plunder Patrol Runic, uh, it's Booty Booty Butt Cheeks. Pretty much... Like, what, what is all this here? I'm just kind of quickly looking through. Now, all this belongs in the booty booty butt cheek category. I don't know why all these are listed here. Um, it's not named Snake Eyes or Ubel. Uh, I don't know why you'd be playing Ragnarika. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and put all this in the booty booty butt cheek and ask what y'all think. Guys, these are my rough first impressions of the brand new format. Like I said, the balance is only about 30 minutes old. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm also going to be having deck profiles and all that coming down the pipeline. So be sure to stay tuned in. Subscribe if you haven't already, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.